I'm going to talk you through the communications feature on BetAngel in this video. And to bring up the communications feature, what you need to do is go to Settings, which is this spanner in the middle of the screen. Um, click on that and you'll get one of these tabs and you want the communications tab. And what I'm going to explain here is how it works and how to maximize your connection to Betfair using BetAngel. One of the things that we've done on BetAngel is we've made sure that we give you a raw feed. And the reason that we've done this is everybody has a different um, connection to the internet, uh, different locations, and want to achieve different things. So rather than believe that we can give you the perfect connection, we let you modify the raw feed however you wish. It takes a little bit of work to do this and, or to find something that you're happy with, um, but this is much better than just giving you a standard connection and not letting you modify any of its behavior. So what I'm going to explain now is how this works and the way it works and why it works that way. So um, a couple of standard features before we start talking into some of the detail. The connection smoothing um, will modify the way that the, be the connection behaves to allow you to get a smoother connection. It irons out the bumps and ripples. Uh, unfortunately, Betfair um, API sometimes returns data in a timely manner, sometimes it doesn't, and that can be dependent upon your connection as well. The connection smoothing allows you to smooth out um, the way that data is returned from Betfair and modifies the behavior in BetAngel in terms of um, the way that it interprets and displays that data. So you can have that set to low, medium, or full. Um, if you've got a good connection, then you may as well have it as off and modify other parameters within the communications tool. The dynamic connection tuner you can is a slider. Basically, if you slide it to the far right to 100, that says you're having no effect, you're not modifying the behavior of the connection at all. But ideally, what you want to do is pull it as far to the left as possible. I have mine set somewhere between 3 and 6. And if you set it to a lower value, that basically improves the speed and the way that BetAngel interacts with Betfair. So what you don't want to do is set it to absolutely zero because what will then happen um, if you're on a slow connection is the prices will stall and nothing will happen. So ideally you want to set it at the lowest possible value without the software stalling. Now the most important um, element within uh, the communications tool is to understand the way that Betfair limits the amount of requests that you can make per second and so on. So Betfair impose a limit of 20 data requests per second. So if I exceed 20 data requests per second, you get a little box coming up saying here, exceeding this request will incur a charge. So ideally you want to keep it below 20. And Betfair charge you on the basis of if you go over 20 um, on average. So typically we recommend to people and the default is set at 15 because that is well below 20 and on average you shouldn't exceed 20. Um, how and what is a data request? There's, you know, I could go on for half an hour explaining the charging structure. It's very complicated, but I'll give you some guidance here about what you should and shouldn't do. First off, if you slow down the rate at which you refresh, um, that will reduce the number of data requests going off per second. How do you know how many you've got? Well, if you look down here, you can see that the counter is at five. And if I speed this up to five a second, you can see that the counter suddenly shoots up. So monitor this figure at the bottom. This is the figure that you need to look at to understand um, if you've got your connection optimized. So you can see here it's running at 15 a second. We've set the limit at 15 a second. And what happens at, with BetAngel is if you exceed the limit to ensure you don't incur a charge, we buffer the calls. So the problem with buffering is it may give the impression that it's not operating at its full capacity. So if you want to ensure that it's operating at its full capacity, just increase the number of limits to whatever figure you like. So if I whack these up to 40 per second, that's way too high. But you can see here it's saying if we monitor the data request counter, we can see that it's um, operating at 17. So the limit that we need to set it at really is about 17 because that ensures that BetAngel can make all the calls that it needs without buffering at that limit and therefore that's the safe limit. You'll get the maximum smoothest, nicest connection to Betfair. So what happens if we set this too low? If I set this to, you can see the price is updating over here. If I set this to 5, then obviously we will bump into um, a, um, 
an issue straight away. The, the number of calls set at 5 means that BetEngine can only update 5 times a second. It wants to update at 17 and therefore it's going to start buffering. So can you see the price activity is slowed down a bit. It's sticky, it doesn't feel quite as nice. But if I bump this back up to 17 then you can see we're in full flow again or, or about as full flow as you can get for a Greyhound market. So if you want to maximize your connection decide whether you want the smoothing, pull the connection tuner over to the left as much as you can without stalling the connection um, and set your data request limit to a level where it stops buffering. So you know initially you would go too high and you can see here that the average is about 17 so therefore you can say well okay I can safely set it maybe at 19 or 18 and still be well within the number of calls it wants to make without it buffering. But you can influence the behavior and the number of calls as well by modifying these characteristics down here. So in this edition of BetAngel we poll Betfair for the profit and loss um, account, how much money you've, you're making or how much money Betfair thinks you're making or losing I should say. But of course we know that uh, you want to make as much money as possible. Um, so it's only ever going to be a green of course. So you can see here it's got profit and loss. How many times does it call a profit and loss per second? Maybe you don't need it to be um, five times a second so we can slow that down to maybe once a second and you can see that the number of calls you're making drops. So if the profit and loss isn't important to you um, or you only want it updated once a second then pull that down. Or if it is a bit more important to you then maybe do 500 milliseconds twice a second and you can see that you know we're still well down from the 17 that we were at before. Matched and unmatched bets. If we put a bet into the market, we want to know what's happened to it. So you probably want to set that quite fast. Um, but perhaps that isn't so critical for you if you're doing something else. So you can slow that down and you can see the rate drops again. So you can pull the number of requests down and still be well inside the limit that you're on. Full market depth, do you require that? Well, if you do, you can speed it up. But of course, the data request counter will start rising. Um, or if you don't want it at all, you can set it to a minute and then you effectively lose that call and it's only made once every 60 seconds. And the same for the traded volume as well. You can modify all four of those characteristics there to raise or lower the number of data requests that you're making per second. So basically the key to getting the best connection, ensure the connection tuner is as far to the left as possible. You decide whether you want the smoothing on or off. Um, that does impact some of the elements of um, what you're doing. But the key is basically put the number of calls up very high to start with. That will give you a figure down here and then you can start to tweak and modify, work out where that base figure is and then call uh, pull the data request calls back down to that level. If you have the number of calls per second too low and the number of modifications here are calling it too high then the connection will stall and that is obviously not your objective so it's getting that balance right and the way to do that is to modify this number here and keep an eye on this number here while you're fiddling around with all of the settings here. When you're happy with the settings that you've got what you can actually do is save them as well so if we go into the save as we can call this my best connection um, but it may be that for different sports you know in play pre-off you require different settings so maybe you know if you're doing golf you only need the matched unmatched bets to update once a second but if you're doing in play um, trading you probably want it to update much faster so you could always do this horse racing in play however you want to do that and then the all of the options you've got are available from within here so you can actually save individual settings depending upon what you want to achieve and how fast you want it to refresh and all of those areas and excuse me, so on from there. So it's perfectly possible to modify that. When you're setting all of these settings as well, bear in mind some of the advanced features of BetAngel. So if we fire up Guardian, then Guardian refreshes at one per second or more, depending upon what you want to achieve. So bear in mind that the data request counter down here will have to take into account Guardian as well. So if we add in a range of uh, races that are taking place today and Guardian starts cycling those once a second. Take that into account as well. If you've got Guardian running with any active markets in it, it will be cycling those markets and therefore it will poll Betfair and have a, an additional data request. 
The same can be said as well on um, Tennis Trader and Soccer Mystic. They have to call the Betfair markets to return data, so if you have those open, they will increase the number of data calls that you're making per second. Um, so take all of those into account and adjust your settings accordingly and also bear in mind that you can actually have um, multiple settings for multiple scenarios that you want to deploy. So very flexible tool. Um, we've given you the raw feed. You can fiddle around with it as much as you like but after watching this video you should know now how to best optimize your connection.